It was a balmy summer's evening. And a goodly crowd was there. Well, they well nigh packed old Joe's bar room on the corner of the square. And as the songs and witty stories came through the open door, this vagabond crept slowly in and poised upon the floor. Where did it come from? Someone said. The wind has blown it in. What does it want? Another asked. Some whiskey, rum, or gin? Here, Toby, seek him. If your stomach's equal to the work, I wouldn't touch him with a fork. Why, he's as filthy as a Turk. All this badinage the poor wreck took with stoic good grace. In fact, he even smiled, as if somehow he'd struck the proper place. Why, come now, boys. Surely there are kindly hearts in so good a crowd. Why, to be in such good company would make a deacon proud. Well, give me a drink, that's all I want. For I'm out of funds, you know. But when I had the cash to treat the gang, why, this hand was never slow. At that you laugh as though this pocket never held a sou. But I once was fixed as well, my boys, as any one of you. There, thanks. That's braced me nicely. God bless you one and all. Why, well, next time I pass this saloon, I'll make another call. Sing you a song? Oh, I can't do that. My singing days are in the past. My voice is cracked and my throat's wore out and my lungs are going fast. Say, boys, give me another whiskey and I'll tell you what I'll do. Well, I'll tell you this funny story. And it's a fact, I promise, too. That I was ever a decent man, not one of you would think. But I was some four or five years back. Come on, give me another drink. Fill her up, Joe, I need to put some life into this frame and such meager drinks to a bum like me are miserably tame. Five fingers and cork and whiskey too. Well, boys, here's luck. And landlord, my best regards to you. Well, you've treated me pretty kindly. So I'd like to tell you how I came to be the dirty sot you see before you now. As I said, I once was a man of muscle frame and health, and but for an awful blunder, might have had considerable wealth. For I was a painter, not the kind that dabbles on brick and wood, but an artist, and for my age was rated pretty good. I worked hard at my canvas and was bidden fair to rise, and gradually I saw the star of fame before my eyes. I did a picture perhaps you've seen, tis called the chase of fame. Why, it brought me fifteen hundred pounds and added to my name. Then I met a woman. Now comes the funny part with eyes that petrified my brain and sank into my heart. Why don't you laugh? Tis funny that the vagabond you see could ever love a woman or expect her love for me. But twas true, and for a month or two, her smiles were freely given. And when her loving lips touched mine, it carried me to heaven. Did you ever see a woman for whom your very soul you'd give? With a form like the Milo Venus, too beautiful to live, and eyes that would beat the koh or and a wealth of chestnut hair. If so, twas her, for there never was another half so fair. I was working on a portrait one afternoon in May, a fair-haired boy, a friend of mine that lived across the way. And Madeline admired it. But much to my surprise, she said she'd like to meet the man who had such 
dreamy eyes. It didn't take long for her to know him, and before the month had flown, my friend had stolen my darling, and I was left alone. Then, ere a year of misery had passed above my head, the jewel that I had treasured so had tarnished and was dead. So that's how I took the drink, boys. Why, I never saw you smile. And here I thought you'd be amused and laughing all the while. What's the matter, friend? Is that a teardrop in your eye? Come, laugh like me. Tis only babes and women who should cry. Say, boys, give me another drink and I'll be glad. And I'll draw right here a picture of the face that drove me mad. Why, hand me that chalk with which you keep your baseball score, and you shall see the lovely Madeline upon the bar room floor. Another drink, and with chalk in hand, the vagabond began to sketch a face that might well by the soul of any man. Then as he placed another lock of hair upon the shapely head, with a fearful shriek, he leaped, then fell across the picture, dead.